You've got a C10, you need one of these. Sure do. Hey, I'm Steve back here in the QA1 garage with Damian Braze looking at the new C10 cross member. Tell us, Damian, what is going on with the C10 cross member? Well, this is our 63 to 87 C10 cross member. Um, you know, one of the biggest problems with lowering a C10 is ground clearance. We've raised the lower control arm mounts two inches on this cross member for improved clearance and additional lowering capability. We've added a rack to it to get rid of the factory steering box help tighten up the steering, get rid of that worn out power box or manual box, depending on the year of the truck. Um, this is a completely bolt-in system. We've got modular engine mounts, so it's gonna cover your big block, small block, LS. Uh, we've even got U-welded mounts if you wanna put your engine in some other location than stock. It looks a lot lighter too than what uh, comes out of that truck. Yeah, yeah, we've taken a good amount of weight out of this as we've raised everything up for the added ground clearance. All right, well, now that we know about the cross member, let's get it in this old thing. Yeah, let's get this factory cross member out, steering out. Sounds good. Bolt her up. So getting ready to put that cross member in, we've got obviously the front clip and the engine out of this. Uh, what more are we going to have to do, Damien? Well, um, depending on your truck and how it's set up, the spindles and brakes might be the only thing that you're reusing or if you're adding drop spindles and different brakes, you know, basically the whole cross member and steering system can come out, unbolt the steering shaft at the column here and drop the cross member and all the suspension out together. Should just be able to drop it all as one, huh? And, you know, we're, we're taking a substantial amount of weight off the front of the truck. So we're going to want to make sure that the back is supported well, so it doesn't tip off. Let's do it. So with the engine out, we've got the engine stands and mounts out. We've got the bolts out of the upper control arm mounts on the outside of the frame. Now we've just got these three bolts on the bottom of the frame rail to take out, and this whole thing's gonna drop out. Uh, depending on the year of your truck, you're gonna wanna check for brake lines and make sure none of that's connected. Um, and we've got the tie rod ends loose already too, so that'll make it easier to get this out. All right, so we've got the original cross member all torn out. We're down to basically the frame rails. Um, where do we go from there, Damien? Well, we're gonna lift that thing up into place and we're gonna put bolts through the center holes from the factory cross member. And that's our starting point. That's how we locate everything. Now this would be a good time for a customer to paint their frame or clean it up as they will on this one. If, if you wanted to do that, that'd be great. We don't have time, so we're not going to. Plus, if we painted it, it wouldn't match the rest of the truck. Someday. All right, let's Someday. get it put in. Now we've got the cross member in place, located with a single bolt on each side. We've got four holes to drill on the bottom, two more three-eighths holes to drill here, and then we've got the four half-inch holes. I like to use a drill, but the same size as the hole that we need to drill. Put a pilot in there, basically that's marking the center of the hole. So I did that on all of these. And then I'm gonna come back with a smaller bit, make a pilot hole, and then I'll actually drill it out. In order to get more ground clearance, we've raised the suspension mounting points. So these larger holes here are where the factory upper control arm mounting bolts would go through. And we're drilling new holes up approximately an inch and a half higher. So the new upper control arm mounting studs are gonna go through these holes here. I'm just enlarging them a little bit over half inch to give a little more clearance putting it in. Now that we've got the cross member in place, we're gonna move forward. What's the next step, Damien? 
Uh, we've got the new upper shock mount in place. We're using this as a drill guide. We've got two holes to drill in the top and two holes to drill on the side of the frame. Once we get those holes located, we've got an inner bracket that we can put in and get all of this bolted together, start hanging control arms. Nice, let's do it. In locating our upper shock mount, we're gonna have two slotted holes here. This is because the earlier trucks have a shorter frame height. So you'll line up these two holes with the two slotted holes. There is a hole very close to one of these holes. It's not made to line up. We're just gonna focus on these two uh, side holes, get it clamped into place and then drill it. So with the cross member in place, we've got our upper shock mounts on, use those to locate the holes and drill the holes in the top and side. That's gonna help locate the inner brace and once we get this tightened up, this hole should line up in the cross member here and we can get the bolt in there. Um, so one thing that we ran into on this one, the inside of the frame has undercoating on it and probably grease and gunk. We actually had to scrape that off to get everything to line up. So. And even still, we're gonna put these on loosely and then draw it all in. Yeah, we're, we're getting all the bolts in loosely and then we'll start tightening them down once everything's in. With many already existing customers having the QA1 set up on their trucks, the new cross member will not use a cross shaft for mounting. We'll have uh, just two pivot points in the cross member. So what do we have to do for existing customers, Damien? All right, so the new cross member is backwards compatible with all existing QA1 C10 kits. Uh, to make that work, we need to remove the cross shaft. We're gonna mount the bushing housings directly to the cross member. So if we're doing a retrofit install, we need to take these bolts out of the end of the cross shaft. And I would recommend doing that while this cross shaft is still bolted to the factory cross member. Uh, there's blue Loctite on those things and it, it can be a real bear to hold this thing tight and get that Loctite to let loose. Um, once these cap screws are out, we will need to remove at least one of these housings to get the cross shaft out. Uh, but you do want to loosen up the bolts on both sides. That way when you put it into the cross member, we can get everything aligned, tightened down, uh, and then come back and tighten up the bolts on the lower control arm. That way there's no friction, there's no binding, and we keep that nice smooth movement on the lower control arms. And the only other thing that will have to be done to existing customers' arms is the, the lower shock mounts? Right, so on the retrofit kit, we raised the suspension, and to add to that increased ground clearance that we wanted, we did go with a lower profile shock mount to move the lower shock mount up. So swap out your existing lower shock mounts to the new ones included in the retrofit kit. Now, for customers that don't already have any of the QA1 stuff, <clears throat> all of this stuff is coming to them. Uh, new arms with the cross member, what's the differences there as far as the install? So on the install, we're not gonna have the cross shaft included with the arms. And being that we're gonna have to have the bolts loose and get these aligned with the cross member when we do the install, these are gonna be packaged separately. So when you get the arm, you'll open the box up, the arm will be in there, the bushing housings will be in there with the bolts. Uh, go ahead, get these loosely bolted up. And when you bolt them onto the cross member, you put the sleeves in, install the spacer on each side, and, we're ready and bolt to go. it up. All right. So pretty straightforward. We've got a spacer that needs to go on each side of the bushing housing. And I don't have quite enough hands to hold everything together and put the bolts in. So a little bit of grease on the spacer here. Stick it on, it's gonna hold it in place. And then we can install the arm on the cross member and put the bolts in. Now that the control arm's on, I'm gonna bolt the shock mount brackets on and then install the shock. We've got the lower control arm installed, pivot bolts tightened up on this side. Steve's gonna get the ones on that side. Now we need to tighten up the bolts on the bushing housing here. Um, I've hung, I put the tether in here just to hold everything up and make it easier to work on. We'll get to that in a minute. We've 
We've got the lower control arm on, the pivot bolts are tightened up. We tightened up the bearing housing bolts here. Uh, now we're ready to put the shock on. So with the shock, we want to put the tether on and the wider spacer with the cutout in it goes on the bottom. So you got that slid in there. We've adjusted the hoist so that, and then set the lower control arms on a jack stand so that the bolt's gonna line up here when we're ready. But we're not quite ready for the shock yet. Uh, we need to put the upper control arm on. We're gonna make sure we put the concave spacers on over the mounts here. And slide the upper control arm on. And we can actually tip it back just enough and have it sit out of the way. Oops. Um, so now with the upper arm on, grab the bolt and grab our quarter inch spacers. These need to go on each side of the bearing. And we do have three different mounting holes with the upper shock mount bracket here. This is to give it added ride height adjustability. We're going to go for maximum drop on this one and put it in the top hole. Now we got the bolt in, we can put our upper spacer on. And then once we get a little bit more weight on the front of the truck, we can go ahead and set it down and get the tether looped over the mount. We've got the tether on here. This is about a quarter inch shorter than the fully extended length of the shock. So it's going to prevent the shock from going to full droop. And once we get our rack and pinion put in, it's gonna prevent the possibility of the inner tie rod ends getting bent. Shocks in place, we've got the bolts in here. Um, we've got the upper control arm on. Before we put the spindle on, we want to go ahead and install a rack just so we don't have to mess around with the spindles and brakes being in the way. Uh, this rack, it's based on a, a 97-04 Dodge Dakota, gives us good travel, puts the input in the right spot inside the frame so you don't have to modify anything. Um, with the raised suspension, we couldn't use the factory steering box because the steering shaft would run directly through the upper control arm. So going to the rack is a good solution to fix that and improve the steering feel and get rid of that worn out heavy box. We do need to install the bushings for the new engine mounts on the cross member. Um, it is easier to do before the rack goes in, but there is just enough room to slide it in if you forgot like we did and need to put that in. Putting our tie rods together here to go on the rack. Um, first thing to note, this is a left-hand rod end, and you can tell the left hand from the right. Left hand has a groove machined into it, right does not. So we want to thread that on there, thread that onto the inner tie rod end on the rack. Once we get this together, we want to put our spacers together. So first one to go in, we've got a tapered spacer that goes in the top side of the steering arm. This basically makes this a straight through design. So we don't have to drill out the steering arm. This is designed to work on the square body spindles. So 73 to 87 spindles. And we put the tapered spacer in that allows us to use a 916 bolt drops right in spacer on the bottom side for bump steer correction and bolts together. Well, Damien, we've got most of the suspension installed and we've got the truck in the air. Figured we'd go ahead and go after this front sway bar. Tell us about the install on that. 
So we've got these new brackets to move the sway bar up, increase the ground clearance there. Um, you're gonna have to remove the factory sway bar brackets, which we've already done. And then these are going to bolt on using the rear mounting hole from the factory bracket. And then we will have to drill a new hole just a little bit forward of that. Okay. Yeah, I noticed just the rear hole lines up, but we didn't use the front hole due to, uh, we're trying to get the sway bar tucked up in there. Right. Is what I'm hearing. Yep. Nice. So we needed to move the bracket forward a little bit, help space things out. All right. We've got the sway bar brackets installed on the frame. Make sure you put the bolts in with the threads pointing down before you bolt the brackets up tight. Um, sway bar is installed, inch and three eighths diameter. Uh, the QA1 control arms work exclusively with the QA1 sway bar. And the reason for that is our rod in style end link. So this is very low friction, takes a lot of bind out of the front suspension and actually makes a noticeable improvement on the ride quality versus the OE sway bar. Uh, we've got high misalignment spacers in the lower. On the upper, we've got a stud that goes in here with the high misalignment step built into it. And then we've got a high misalignment spacer that goes on followed by a nut. This suspension system was designed around 18 and 20 inch wheels. Uh, with an 18 or a 20, you do have plenty of clearance around the rod end here. The wheel's actually gonna be down around and over the rod end. It can be used with a 15 inch wheel, but we are gonna wanna remove the spacers. Bump steer isn't going to be as good, um, but we, we won't have to worry about the tire getting cut by the rod end. So if you do have to run 15 inch wheels on your project for appearance or preference, uh, you are going to have a little bit more bump steer than what the system was designed to have. Just remove that spacer, bolt the rod on tight to the bottom of the steering arm. So I've got the wheels back on the front of the truck and got it set down where we've got some load on the springs. Now we can get this tether put on. Get that up over the shoulder, flat washer. We'll get the nut on there, tighten it up. That'll keep the tethers in place. I'll raise it up, keep going on putting the rest of the truck back together. Well, that pretty well wraps up the install of the suspension itself. I've got the engine mount brackets to go in here. Uh, these are the LS mounts. We do have some for small block and big block engines as well. And there's another bracket that goes on the engine block. Uh, we'll get that put in. We've got a bracket that goes on the top of the frame rail with a support bearing for the two-piece steering shaft. Once the engine's back in with the headers, we can go ahead and build the steering shaft. Um, so engine needs to go back in, front clip back on, but suspension wise, that pretty well takes care of it. Thanks for watching and remember to go drive it.